I wanted to start with the auctions just because we have the supply. Is there going to be the demand if equities can continue to find their footing? Well, I think the market continues to have to find the right price to get that supply off. Uh, there's a couple of things that have been working against supply uh, so far this year. One, of course, we know that the Fed is reducing the size of their balance sheet, so they're buying less of, of these assets, of high-quality assets. And two, uh, foreign investors have less of an incentive to buy U.S. fixed income assets because hedging costs have increased so much over the last uh, year or so. So we continue to have to find the right price. Well, fair. And uh, Japanese investors actually sold almost $34 billion of U.S. Treasuries back in February. Do you feel like overseas demand uh, will come back as rates tread around 280? And we think the key thing for overseas demand, and you're seeing this in treasuries as well as in corporate bonds. So in high-grade corporate bonds, you've been seeing spreads widening quite a bit over the last uh, three months, is that hedging costs have really increased. Uh, I'm sure you've talked about the LIBOR OAS spread mm -hmm. on, your, on your program. Uh, that just continues to drive up hedging costs, that along with the Fed rate increases, so that the U.S. fixed income becomes less attractive fully hedged. And a lot of these investors you're talking about are interested in the fully hedged return. So, Rob, it feels a little bit like there's a tug of war. There's a ra range here, and the top of the range is sort of uh, defined by this oversupply of Treasury, the increased supply of Treasury, and a, little, a lot of concerns. On the other hand, the bottom of the range is defined by things like President Trump's tweeting, because whenever he scares everybody, <laughs> it, it, who's going to win out in that tug of war? Well, I think we're stuck in, a, we're stuck in that range. The, the thing that could upset that range would be some sign of either inflation, so if we got real inflation, which we don't think is going to happen, but if that would be a big surprise to the market, if we actually realized inflation, and that's when we break above three in the 10-year. Uh, the, the other surprise could be that, you know, given the rise in, in LIBOR, given uh, the la complete lack of inflation, maybe the Fed gets a little more dovish, and that might drive us down. So I think we're st it, it's really, it's not trade, it's not these things that, that I think are defining the range, it's more... Uh, fundamental economic data. And you mentioned corporate credit widening, but if you take a look at, say, high-yield investment grade, the widening that we've ever seen has really been an investment grade That's and not right. high-yield. How do you explain that? Uh, it's exact forces we were talking about a moment ago, which is those buyers, those global buyers that you talked about that have driven this market for the last couple of years are pulling back. And so as there's less demand for that uh, from those buyers, uh, those assets, which are the high quality assets, have leaked wider than high, than high yield, which are driven more by total return buyers here in the U.S. So when you're an investor and you're looking at a portfolio and you have to manage some kind of risk from Washington and treasuries uh, have used to be the hedge as well as gold, but that trade necessarily hasn't truly really panned out, where do you go? Well, ultimately, there's no way, there's, the, the best way to manage your risk is to pare back on those risky assets. Uh, I think. You're right, in the current environment, uh, to get too cute in terms of your dollar position or your treasury position as a hedge could be quite tricky. Partly because growth and inflation are not moving and are not correlated right now. So, so Rob, is there a danger of becoming complacent when it comes particularly to corporate credit at this point? Because we hear it's a range and it's been a range, no problem. As that range has continued, hasn't leverage really increased? I, I just read that, in fact, we're either at or near a record in terms of ratio of corporate leverage to GDP. Is there a real increasing risk there? Well, I think it depends on the time, high, time horizon, because you're right, uh, underwriting is deteriorating, whether you look at it in the, you know, hot, in the CLO market, structured market, you, whether you look at it in, in the corporate market, uh, there is more debt out there. So over the medium term, that creates the tinder for, for issues maybe one or two years down the road. In the shorter term, which is what we're sort of looking at for our portfolios, which is three to six months, we continue to think the drivers will be growth, which is, which is very good, mm -hmm. uh, although consensus has it at very good. Inflation is benign. Um, and so that will be supportive uh, for credit assets. Curve flattening. Yeah. When does it freak you out? How flat do we go? <clears throat> so all the evidence says that when you invert, so when twos, tens invert, or when cash, tens invert, then recession follows, right? That, that's pretty much through history. You can, you can use that as an indicator. So we flatten quite a bit, uh, but we're, we're, we've not gone inverted. So uh, we can sit here at this flatter level for quite a while. What we need to do is watch um, inflation and watch growth. 